Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Run Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about enabling and using CLI, command line access, on the PepLink B1 and B1 5G systems. If you're looking at this for use on another PepLink system, just look into the menus and if it's supported option, what we're talking about here should work on those systems as well. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Hi, here's what we're going to be looking at in this video, and that's managing the CLI or command line interface. With everything going to GUI, this isn't something that some of you may not have dealt with. On the other hand, I mean, I'm an old command line router jockey, so I'm used to being on command line because sometimes when you updated Java or there was an application update, sometimes the GUI would quit working. So you always had to know how to do things in CLI. This time we're going to be looking at it in reference to the PepLink B1 or B1 5G. There are other models in the PepLink line that may have this functionality. You'll see where we're looking at it as we move forward and you may be able to use this on those platforms as well. Number one, we're going to go about enabling CLI. Very straightforward. Then we're going to be talking about how to back up PepLink to TFTP. Then we will look at doing ping, traceroute, and DNS lookup. And But you're saying, well, this Ron, this is already in the GUI. Yeah, but there are times simply when you're, it, you're going to feel more comfortable in doing this from command line because it'll be just like you're doing it from a command prompt on Windows or the DOS box or whatever you want to call it. And then we will also look at showing the cellular modem status just so that if things are acting a little bit strange, you can take a look at the box and see what it thinks is going on before you call the cellular provider's uh, support number. Well, the first thing on our to-do list is going to be getting CLI installed. So we will go to System. Then we will go down to admin security, which we're already in. And then it's just a matter of clicking enable. Now you can do this as LAN or LAN and WAN. For security reasons, I would restrict this to LAN only just because you, you even if everything goes right, there's still the possibility that somebody could get in. So if we just say LAN only, then you're going with what's going to be best. Now, the SSH port, again, for matters of safety, PepLink has decided they want to go to 8822 because 22 is a well-known port number. So you want to kind of keep it up in the, in a range that uh, some people wouldn't bother to port scan for. So I'm going to leave that alone the way it is. And we can just retype it just to make sure it's all right. And then we will click on Save. And then confirm and apply changes. And like I've mentioned in the other videos, before making any changes, you probably want to make it a standard part of your process to back up the configuration versus just going forward. Just in case something might happen. I'm not saying it will, but just in case. So what we can do now is just test to make sure everything's working the way it should and I will go over here I've got a different program that I use because I'm on a Mac although you you can use I could use terminal on here there is putty for Mac there's putty for Windows it's whatever you want to do so what we'll do here is I'll just make this change real quick and Let's call that one temp go down here to 10192.168.50.1. And what have I forgotten to do? I need to, to change the port number. Otherwise, this is going to go nowhere very fast. 
So 8822. And so we will go admin. Yes to the fingerprint. All right. So we're in. We've got a session established. So that's good. And now we can go on to actually trying some of them. Well, now that we've got CLI enabled and we've tested it out, let's establish a brand new session. And once you get that prompt, that's it. There's really no other feedback. So this is kind of a, a bare bones um, implementation in terms of feedback. So we will do system backup. If I can spell backup right. TFTP and 10.0.1.89. And while we patiently wait for the sands of time to go through the hourglass, that's a failed reference to an old uh, soap drama during the day. Now it comes back, you don't know if it's worked or not, so we need to shift over here to the uh, PC. It doesn't... Did I not enter something right here? Let's, all right. Okay, I had the wrong IP address. All right, well that, see, this is what, this is a good indication that, okay, so we'll enter it with the right IP address. Okay, again, no response whether it worked or not, so we'll back over here, and son of a gun, we can look two different areas and we can see the log of, I'm, I'm using the SolarWinds TFTP server. There are several open source ones out there. So that's, uh, you know, it's your choice what you want to do. This is a basic TFTP server. And then you can also look into the directory because by default, the SolarWinds uses TFTP dash root. Now you are not given any choice on naming the file so this is you can do this after it's over there but you can see here all the handshaking that that went on and then the actual file is there so at this point you should be good to go uh, the file is not readable with any text editor because i tried that and it just came up with nothing so it is a binary file that only the pep link can read but at least you've got a way of backing up to a system other than local because if we go here and we go to system configuration see the only option we have is to download it to the local machine well by maintaining a tftp server you're now putting it somewhere else you don't have to worry about the configuration being not being on the machine you think it's on it's you can get from there now when you go to restore it yeah, then you'll probably want to have it loaded locally. But just to have it off your main system or off whatever system you're running on, it just adds another layer of protection that of the file being accidentally deleted. Now, the three most commands that you're probably used to using in troubleshooting are NSLOOKUP, ping, and traceroute. Now, NSLOOKUP is one that is very handy to use. And if you do it, on the PC or whatever you're using on it, as long as it supports that command inside the firewall and it doesn't work, and you go to the pep link and it works there, okay, then it look, you're probably looking at some sort of firewall rule or possibly a misconfiguration of the device where the command's trying to be used. So what we will do is go to support, NS lookup, and we'll use a site of a company that uh, I've known for many years. And first, it comes back and says, "Okay, we're using 
the DNS server on the PEP link. And it says, okay, this is what you asked me for, the www.novell.com, and this is the IP address and the host name that it's registered to because it's possible I might be using a C name. Okay, so that says the DNS resolution worked. Doesn't necessarily mean that the host is online. So what we'll go out and do is next do a ping, which is support ping. And if this beeps at you, anyone in the process of typing the commands out, you're t either not typing the command right or it's not eligible to be used at, at that point in the menu structure you're going to. So we can either ping by name. Okay, so it does come back there, which is redoing you know, the NS lookup that we already did, or you can do by IP address 130.57.66.5. So it, you know, that's just two different ways of, of doing it. Now, the one that tells me the most, because it's not unusual for sites to have respond to ping turned off in their firewall. So you can see at what point this is going uh, and where it starts to drop off is we will do support. And then it's trace route, and you hit tab, and it fills the command out. And you can either do IP address or fully qualified domain name. So it doesn't like that. Interesting. What did I not do right on the command? IP address or domain name. Well, obviously, it didn't like the domain name, so let's try it one more time. Support. Trace route and let's okay IP address or domain okay well we'll try just the domain because I was giving it a fully qualified okay there was the problem I was overthinking it to where I gave it a host name now some systems would have been would have just stripped off the host but this one didn't so we're gonna go through with where it's coming out from my side jumps on to level three. And then we go to Salt Lake, and boy, one hop from Orlando to Salt Lake, that's, uh, they got a pretty good hefty backbone going all the way across country. And then it redirects it up here. Now, when you get an asterisk dot like that, that's a wild card response. So it's responding to anything in that domain. Now, the last command we're going to be looking in at today's examples is looking at the cellular modem. So what we can do is do support, and we'll just do a tab. If we hit enter, then it gives us a list of the commands available. So we'll just do cellular, and then MD status. You can see just by typing a few letters and then tab, it's a little less to have to type. Now if we hit just enter, of course it's going to complain and then what we'll do at this point is just we'll just type a one and it comes back it gives us the chipset information about it and where it says error that's because i don't have anything configured on the cell modem at this point so it's really got no further information to give us but you can see there's quite a bit to do within the pep link and let me shift over no okay we're here oh there we go but there's a lot of good information you can get out of the peplink cli it's an alternative to doing gui only and there's times it simply you like to have another option so it, to do any more with this when you're in cli you can start off with just a question mark and that will start giving you the commands at that layer and see there's even a set command so if we do set and then you can see about we can turn the ap uh the access point off and on from there if we do history then we can see the 
commands and it does oh hold it i'm doing a set and you don't see that's you, you i don't know if you hear the 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 complaining or not so we do history okay well there's it shows you what you would do. so if you forgot the command you type especially if you've been typing quite a bit this gives you another option and if we do get and then we can look at client list and then enter so a lot of what's in the gui you can get to from the command line so it's just a matter of where your preferences lie and it never hurts to know about command line because especially if gui does have a problem knowing how to get into it from command line can be something very advantageous this video again was targeted just your your new user but if you're a seasoned veteran and you want to kind of get a feel for what can happen with command line on the pep link then as you can see it's pretty much an opal hood once you get into it if you're watching this on youtube you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that youtube thinks you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value please click on the like button thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe and enable notifications see you in the next episode Thanks for watching.